Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and in today's video, I have the Monport 40 watt CO2 laser machine. It's a nice machine, but it's the base machine and it is not light burn compatible. So what I'm going to do is upgrade this machine using the Monport laser motherboard, or I'm gonna call it the controller board. This is the second version that Monport has and this will turn this base model laser machine into a light burn compatible laser machine. Welcome back and thanks for joining me for another video on the laser channel. Installing the controller board is very fast and simple. The contents of this controller board box include a very nice and easy to follow manual, followed next by the controller board itself. The board has the same footprint as the one I'll be removing in just a minute. There's also a couple of basic tools along with the full mounting hardware for the board, but I'm going to reuse what's already in the machine. There's also a USB cable to go to the new controller board and another cable The controller board is mounted to this board here, and this board is held on with only three screws. I'll use the 10 millimeter wrench to loosen up all of these so that I have easier access to the controller board. With the three screws removed, this entire metal plate now is free to move around, and I'm now ready to disconnect the wires off of the original controller board. This plate with the original controller board removes very easily. There's just a couple connectors we just saw. And again, the three mounting points to remove this board. Here's the new board that I'll be installing. We'll see when I hold it up that all of the connector locations, they're all in exactly the same spot. There's even the option if your machine has a ribbon cable on it. And this is all going to make the installation very quick and easy. The new board drops directly in the place of the old board. Referencing the user manual, I'll start plugging in the connectors into the new board. Following the manual, I'll plug in the power connector. Next, I'll plug in the Y-axis connector. Followed by the X-axis. And lastly, the limit switches. Before powering on, I double checked all my connections up to the user manual and this cable here that I showed you during the unboxing of the controller board, this does have to be installed and it goes between the power supply and of course the controller board. On the power supply, I did have to disconnect these two white connectors with the white wires coming out of them. Those wires did go up to the back side of the controller board that is on the front of the laser machine and that effectively turns this off. This was the manual control for the laser output. Either end of this cable will fit up to the power supply, but we want the connector that has the black lead to the far left and the red lead in the middle position. Here's the view of that same cable from that power supply going up to the controller board. I'll reinstall the three fasteners that hold this metal board to the main machine and I'll be ready to power up. Before I tighten down this plate, I'll make sure that the USB port is viewable and accessible through the side of the frame of the machine. This is one of my favorite things when I've got a new machine and that is configuring it with Lightburn software. It's incredibly easy. Here inside Lightburn software, we'll see that 
the machine is already trying to connect on COM port three on the X tool profile. And this isn't going to allow the machine to be automatically detected by Lightburn software. To fix this, I need to drop this menu down and this part here has to say choose. If it says anything else, Lightburn will not be able to automatically detect the machine that we're connected to. This looks good. I can now click on devices and find my laser. And here it is. I'll add device and I'm going to name it Monport version two for the version two controller board I just installed. Here, the origin or where the laser is going to home, this is actually going to be in the rear left. Everything else looks good and I'll click next. Here we can see some text is cut off on the top of my screen here. I have found that I can grab the corner of this dialog box and I can drag that. And here is a complete summary of everything that the machine has found. This all looks correct and I'm ready to hit finish and okay. Now I can go over to this drop down menu and I can go all the way down to Monport, which I accidentally misspelled, but that's okay for now. I'll click on that. And I can hear the machine homing already. So already I've got movement on the machine. I wanna check this out even further. So I am going to draw a nice large oval. I'm gonna to navigate to cuts and I'm going to change the speed to 100 millimeters per second. I'm going to turn the power level to zero. I'm going to open this up and we'll watch the laser head move around. And because this is open and I've got the power level set at zero, there'll be no laser firing during this operation. I'm pretty excited and I'm gonna hit start. Look at that, that looks absolutely perfect. Next, I'm gonna turn some laser power on and I'm going to place this simple piece of cardboard in the work area and see if I can cut this out and get some laser energy going out to the work area. Definitely have some laser action going on. Check that out. First pass with the laser and it's already marking the cardboard. I definitely call that a success. I'd like to share with you some of the accessories that are included with this machine along with a brief fly around of the machine of what it looks like on the inside just in case you're not familiar with the Monport 40 watt CO2 laser. Here's what's included with the Monport machine. The user manual, four inch exhaust tubing, a water pump, tape for checking the mirror alignment, a hose clamp that matches up to the exhaust tubing, a focus gauge, silicone sealant for any water line work you might do. This is not grease for greasing the linear rails on the machine a wrench for basic maintenance, a computer cable for connecting the machine, of course, up to your computer, a USB drive with reference files and software, and lastly, a power cable to power everything on the machine. The last items needed to complete the setup on the laser machine include a clean bucket for the water reservoir that the pump will be placed inside of. The water that I'll be using is going to be distilled water. It really does have to be distilled water and not purified water or filtered water. It's just not the same. I like to treat my water with this fish tank LJ growth formula. I put just a capful into this reservoir bucket and it keeps the water cleaner much longer. Next, let's take a quick fly around look at this laser machine. I'll start by showing you the inside of the laser bed area. The first thing that we'll see is the laser head. 
And right next to that is a red dot laser beam. So that'll give me an idea of where the laser beam will land on my work material. In the back is a lighted LED strip. And here's part of the laser path that comes through there, comes off of this mirror, into that mirror, through the focusing mirror, and then down to the work area. The work area is eight inches by 12 inches wide. And this plate is held down with four screws, one in each corner. I have those removed already. And I can lift up this tray. And when I remove that out of the way, we'll see that we've got more depth access and it also reveals a spring-loaded vise. On my other Monport machine, I use that feature quite a bit. Off in this corner, we'll see we've got one of the homing limit switches. There's another switch located up in the front here, and this is to detect when this top cover is opened up. If you're running a project and the laser's on, when this top cover is opened up, the laser will immediately stop making the work area safe to enter. Moving on to the control panel, we're met by a nice power switch here, along with this nice digital control for manually controlling the output of the laser. And there's also a button for pulsing the laser, which is great for checking mirror alignment. Moving up is a nice e-stop button followed by two temperature gauges. The top one is for the power supply that we'll take a look at in just a minute. That's located underneath this panel. And then a water temperature gauge. Inside the control panel, the first thing we're drawn to is this power supply. This is the power supply that runs out to the CO2 laser tube. There is a temperature probe that comes out of there. And that is that top gauge that we looked at up here. Back inside, as I move the camera around, I'm gonna move back a little bit, and right behind this panel is that controller board that we're going to be changing in just a minute. Here's each of the connectors that is going to directly reconnect into that new controller board, and we're gonna start that in just a minute. On the side of the machine, there is a port right here, and this is for the USB computer port. And moving on to the back side of the machine, here is the power cable input. If your electrical system has some grounding issues, there is a separate ground lug that is located on here. And then here are two power outlets. I will be using one of them for the water pump. Here's the exhaust fan. That's where that silver exhaust tubing will connect up with the included hose clamp. And then we have a water inlet and a water outlet, and those will be running down to the bucket right here. When I open up this guard, it has the same treatment as the front guard where each hinge pin is spring loaded. So I can completely remove this top guard if I need to for maintenance. Removing the top guard was pretty easy. And now I've got an extra hand available to point at things. And this right here is going to be the CO2 laser tube. It runs the entire width of the machine. And this is always what the laser tube should look like. It should always look clear and it should always be dust free. It's a pretty neat setup and it's a really great way to get introduced to the CO2 laser world. This was definitely quick and easy to install the new controller board and making the connections following the user manual. The connection of the machine up to Lightburn software is also very quick and easy due to the convenient feature of the auto detect feature in Lightburn. I think while making this video, I spent more time moving the cameras around, moving the lighting around that's just outside of the frame here. This board install, this controller install, would take maybe about five, 10 minutes. It's really a direct unplug from one connector from the old board and plug it into the new controller board. And again, the user manual has all kinds of pictures taking you through step-by-step -step through this process. Thanks for watching another video on the Laser Channel. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or ringing that notification bell. Doing any number of those things helps the channel out, 
but more so, it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.